Welcome back to Club Innovators. I am here today with Greg Rotzel, the VP of Sales at Capstone Hospitality, and Tyler Vandermulen, the VP of Partnerships at Capstone Hospitality. So, gentlemen, welcome on. Guys, how are we doing? Great to be here. <laughs> As always. Um, so today we're going to talk about the importance of having a CRM system in membership sales and, and really just in general, you know, around the club as you're working. So Greg, can you kick us off just with a couple of points of how important it is to have a CRM system and, and why that's even necessary? Yeah, absolutely. Um, since we have started with a CRM system, I think, I think when we put it into place, it was about four years back. Um, before that, we were really just utilizing Excel spreadsheets, um, organizing through either email or, or Excel, um, which, you know, is fine, right? But uh, there's there's so much to be said about a a CRM system in general. Um, it keeps you organized. It it keeps everything in one place. You can see all your activity. Um, it, it's great for salespeople, but it's also really, really good for managers. Um, it's also really great for tracking data and tracking sales. And it helps the marketing department. Um, it helps clients. It helps cli it, it helps everyone, right? And there's there's so much that you can dive into. So um, that that's just kind of like a, a super brief overview and and i'm sure we'll get into more detail and and i know tyler kind of has a a really good idea of of how that's broken out um but it is it is a kind of intensive model for sales success really and it it encapsulates all all those different things that that i just mentioned yeah, I know, Tyler, you had a an interesting approach that you said to, or maybe an interesting term you used for it before we hopped on. Can you go ahead and cover that one? Yeah. So when I'm talking with prospective clients uh, regarding our services and how we can assist private clubs in maximizing their membership sales, you know, I talk to them about what type of CRM system do you have? Clubs often have you know a point of sale system like a Jonas or a North Star or a Club Essentials, but what they commonly don't have, or at least not specific to membership sales, is a CRM system to keep their salesperson organized and efficient. So when I talk to them about us having a fully customized CRM system in HubSpot that we've worked with over the last handful of years to fully you know, get fine-tuned for what we do as membership sales directors, I always describe it as a three-pronged tool. You know, the first prong would be for the salesperson directly. As Greg briefly mentioned, it keeps them organized, it tracks all activity, it tracks data like lead sources. Um, so that's a key thing in itself. Um, it can set reminders, it can do email tracking. There's a lot of really cool features and components that obviously we'll talk at length about today. The second prong would be what that does for us as a sales management company that works remotely all across the country. We've got sales reps all over North America. We need to keep our finger on the pulse and understand what's working, what they're doing. Um, so that second prong would be from a sales management standpoint, us as Capstone, we can very clearly see forecast and trends, especially with COVID, now kind of the, the post-COVID world, see those trends in real time and be a little bit more proactive in our approach. The third prong would be um, for the client benefit from a club management or ownership perspective, they're getting these really slicked in or slicked up you know, reports that allow them to really see activity, tour scheduled, tours executed, close percentages, time in the pipeline, lead sources. So again, when you want to talk about really dialing in what's working well at your club, that is such a useful tool that if you're just working off of Excel or, you know, hey, our person's really organized, they've got a calendar, they've got you know, their phone with reminders, like all these other things that sure, that like those are good steps, but it's not maximizing and optimizing all of your opportunities when you have a CRM system that's fully built out specific to what your membership sales director does. Yeah, those are great points and, and two great overviews of a CRM system and why they're important. And really before we started, I took the time and I kind of broke out some bullets uh, with my experience with it. And I'm going to kind of ask you guys about a handful of those bullets now. And the first one is organizing contacts. I, I know a big piece of it, we just talked about both of you said organization several times. How important is it to organize your contacts and structure that correctly? Yeah, I th that may be the most important thing when it comes to a CRM system and when it comes to the day to day for a salesperson, right? Um, when you are a membership sales director at a club, 
you get pulled in all different directions. When it is prime season, if you're, say you're in the Northeast and it's May, June timeframe, you're going to be, you're going to be handling tours nonstop. You're going to be going to member events. There, there is so much that is going on on a daily basis that you will get pulled into. Organizing your contacts, organizing your prospects, and being able to go back to previous conversations that you have had with everyone is, it's, it's so important when it comes to your sales process so that you're not missing anything, um, so that you're able to push the, the process forward with, with everyone. Um, so within a CRM, you're, you're able to track all of your calls. You're able to track all of your emails. You can connect your, uh, your work email, your membership email to the CRM system. So it's just filing into each individual contact page and you're seeing all of that information there right in front of you. You're able to track all of your tours. You're able to create tasks, which organizationally is probably the most important thing where it's basically creating a to-do list through that CRM and you're getting notifications exactly when you want those notifications. Um, yeah, Greg, quick follow-up yeah. question here. How many contacts do you think an average sales rep is dealing with at one time? It, it's going to differ uh, club to club. Uh, some clubs get a ton of organic inquiries. Some clubs may not get as many, but um, if, if your membership sales director is, is in a good spot with their leads and they're doing what they need to do, you're probably talking to 40 to 50 different people at, at one time. And that's making a call, then calling somebody else, then texting someone, then emailing someone, then <laughs> calling somebody back then following up. Like it's, it is a constant flow, right? Or at least if you are doing that, you're, you're probably following the correct sales process. Um, so you gotta, you gotta stay on top of things or else you're gonna, you're gonna start missing out. I'll, I'll chime in real quickly on that same note, Kyle. Last I looked in our HubSpot account across all of our you know, clients that we've worked with, we have over a hundred thousand different contacts. So again, for, for most clubs currently where we have, you know, a sales member, a uh, sales director engaged there, they probably have upwards of three, four, 500 contacts in total. Um, Totally unrelated topic. We've got to work through that quickly to sift through who's real, who's not. Um, but as Greg mentioned, at any given point, you're actively engaged with probably no less than 30 to 50 that you need to be timely and organized and understanding. Uh, and on that same note, when again, organizing the contacts, follow ups and timing is everything. Uh, I spent a, a long majority of my membership sales days at a club in Northeast Florida, very slow cycle. You get leads years in advance before they'd actually relocate to that area, be ready to join. <laughs> and if I was better than my competitor at follow-ups in a timely fashion and have those notes right in front of me of all of these conversations we previously had, to be able to pick that phone up and immediately know where we left off and I'm not asking questions that we already know the answer to, you earn their trust, that wall comes down, you can advance those through the sales process in a quicker fashion and make more sales because of it. So. Yeah, that's such a good point about being able to keep track of 40, 50, you know, maybe even 100 people at the same time. It's really hard if you're old school on that, right? It's really hard to do that with an Excel sheet or anything like that, no matter how organized you are. Things get lost. You know, you write a note on a napkin, it sits on the end of your desk and someone knocks it off or something like that. So it, it's hard to keep track without, a, you know, a very organized, you know, CRM system like that. So day to day, I walk around our office and I hear the the phrase deal stages all the time. I'm not a salesperson, so I'm not as familiar with it, but I know it's important because I hear it left and right daily. Can you tell me a little bit about deal stages and what that is within the CRM, Greg? Yeah, absolutely. So deal stages, they were not really something we we worked with or utilized before a CRM system. It's kind of something that we we brought into the CRM system that um, is now a big part of our process. So as I said earlier, what we're trying to replicate is the start to finish sales process within our CRM, fully customized, fully laid out. So part of it is going to be your, your contacts, your individual contact pages, being able to see all that information and all that activity. But the next step is deal stages. So we basically have these deal stages broken out 
from start to finish. So essentially from the time of scheduling a tour to either closing a sale or potentially losing a sale or having somebody say no. Um, and we have questions, we have boxes that need to be filled. It's, it's making sure and, and make basically making sure that our salespeople are keeping track of their process and going about it a hundred percent the right way. Um, so we have, uh, we have different stages such as appointment scheduled. What, what do you need to prepare for that appointment, for that tour, when people are coming out? Um, we have a stage uh, that is proposal presented, and there's a lot of questions within that proposal presented that keeps track of, of the specific deal and the specific offer that has been presented to this prospect. Because um, otherwise, you're moving people through the deal stages. If you're not, if you're not answering those questions, again, you're, you're losing track of things pretty easy, easily. Yeah, I bet. Um, so again, it's it's replicating the sales process and make sure making sure that each salesperson is asking the right questions and getting the correct information. Yep, and I'll pin you back off of Greg here. Um, one of the again kind of most insightful things we can capture from a data standpoint is, in my opinion, why didn't they join? When it goes to a closed loss stage, we then have again another opportunity to capture information. Was it a financial? decision? Was it bad timing? Was it they joined another club? And if so, what were the reasons for that? So we're co constantly capturing these things that allow us to a, either identify a break in our process where we can provide further training for our sales directors, or B, provide feedback to the club on, hey, you know, they're looking for an update to your beach club, or hey, they're looking for better programming for younger families. That is such a value add that we can give to a club. Yeah. When you have that ability, instead of just saying, yeah, they didn't join, they went somewhere else. Well, why? <laughs> well, why? You know what I mean? So uh, I think Greg nailed it, but I think that's just one really interesting component of being able to track all those different deal stages and the reminders that keep our sales reps foundationally on point. Yeah, no doubt. As someone who works in marketing, that why is so important. We ask those questions all the time, but obviously having that information you know, at your fingertips for when you're doing sales is important as well, because right? If they don't join that time because they wanted some family feature that you add nine months from now, then maybe it's time to call that person back. Right. And if you have that information, you can go look it up real quick and recontact that person and, and maybe still get them. You know, you never know what's, what's going to end up landing you a sale in the future. So Greg, earlier we talked about, you said something about organic leads and that kind of leads me into my next question, uh, creating forms and workflows uh, with HubSpot that you can put on your website for organic leads or for website visits. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I, it's it's pretty short and sweet, really. Um, CRM systems allow you to create forms that you can place directly onto, onto your website. So what we do on our end is we create a membership inquiry form uh, that is directly connected to our CRM we put that right onto the membership page on each website uh, that we work with. And on the back end through the CRM system, we create a workflow that basically acts as, as a notification um, to that salesperson that this new prospect, this new contact has come in um, and it labels specific contact properties based on where that person is coming from, based on the information that they're filling out on the form. Um, so it, it's so nice having all those little details connected directly to that form and directly to that workflow. Um, something else that, that we can also do through the CRM is, is what we call a meeting tool, um, or uh, essentially a calendar, right? So each account within the CRM, um, they have their own calendar. They can customize it. They can set it up however they want in terms of hours. Uh, and when they are available. And we can create a button that people click on that go to the website and can see, hey, I want to schedule a tour on this date with the membership sales director. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to put my information in. Um, so it's just, it, it's automating things uh, as much as possible while still having a, a really nice touch. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And like you said, the ability just to drop that right on a website, right? It gives you a code. You can drop it on the back end of a website and you can kind of go from there. So it's not like it's an hours and hours and hours to set it up. You can really set up forms, clone them, you know, and put that code up pretty quickly. 
So we've talked about all these different pieces, but when we put it together, we're looking for reporting and statistics. What are we looking to get reports on? What statistics are important? And, and how do you easily get those within a CRM system? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump at that one real quickly. So I think, again, from a uh, you know, 30,000 foot view, some of the key statistics you want to look at are, you know, how many leads are you getting a month? How many are converting to tours and how many tours are you know, executing? And then how many of those tours that executed are joining? Yeah. Pretty simple, right? I mean, sales is a numbers game. If we get more people out to the club that are going through a proper sales process, being treated to, you know, what the facilities offer for them and their family and their lifestyle. And we've got a highly trained sales rep um, that we can, again, identify kind of, you know, breaks in the chain, so to speak on, hey, we need to continue to work on your closing or asking for the money or overcoming objections. If we see that they are scheduling a ton of tours, but then you're getting a low percentage of them to show up. Yeah, you know, it identifies areas for further improvement that uh, otherwise without a CRM tool, you're just trusting your gut, not data. So it allows for a very objective view of these key data points that can, again, better improve your sales process, better improve your, your sales uh, metrics overall. Yeah, yeah, and I know a piece of it. Oh, sorry, Greg, go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say metrics right there, what, what Tyler touched on right at the end. That's huge, right? We we have kind of your historical ratios um, that we see at every single club. So you've got your lead to tour, tour to close ratios um, that we are constantly looking at. We're constantly looking at that with with our salespeople. And if they're right in line, then that's fantastic. But that's not always the case, right? So if somebody has a, a ton of leads coming in, but not a lot of tours being scheduled, which naturally is is not going to translate to a ton of sales, then we need to work on the sales process with them a little bit. We need to get them to push tours a little bit more to get people out to the club to to get that experience. So that's more speaking from the the management side of things that that I've been doing for a while. Right. You can look into that instantly through the CRM and you can see where, hey, you know, some of these metrics, some of this data and, and some of these ratios are slightly off. Let's work on this process. Let's make sure you're doing things the correct way. And that can make a, a huge difference right off the bat. And we are able to communicate that through the data with uh, with all the clubs that we work with. Right. And I, I think Tyler can speak to this as well. But. Um, that is, that's huge for clubs. That is something that they love to see. Um, because again, if, if you can back something up when uh, based on data, it's going to make it much easier to make solid decisions to say, all right, we should spend a little more money on, on digital advertising, or we should send out some more home letters or some more direct mail campaigns, um, there's there's a lot of facets to it and a lot of it is based on the activity and what you see coming in and um, everything that is being done internally within the crm system um but it's also management it's also client relations it's it, it's those those further conversations that get get a club from 75 percent of the way there to a hundred percent yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head um, marketing-wise, and, and we've talked about this. When we run Facebook or Google ads, we track all of that. And Greg, you and I have spent a lot of time on this. We know definitively that when we run ads, it's 60 to 90 days for that first conversion. So we may start an ad, and we know not to freak out if it doesn't work in the first 25 days. We know we're going to see our first conversion 60 to 90 days. And then it kind of waterfalls after that, and we get a lot more. But being able to tell clients that on the front end, right sets them up for success. Hey, listen, we're going to start Facebook ads. We're not going to see a conversion likely until 60 to 90 days. So that way, if you're two months into it and you haven't had a conversion yet, they, right, they've already had that expectation set. And we do that through pure numbers. And Greg, you know this, like I know it a lot of the times, right? That third month, you know, beginning of the third month or middle, that's when those Facebook ads start to roll and start to get conversions. So it's a really good piece for us to look marketing wise as well and really judge and measure things and be able to clearly communicate with clients on that note. 
Um, the other piece that may be a marketing piece that, that we've kind of touched on is the bail, uh, sorry, the ability to do email campaigns in, in marketing out of a CRM. Can you talk a little bit about maybe doing an email blast and why those are important as a sales rep? Yeah. So back in the day, Excel spreadsheets, you're <laughs> copying and pasting, uh, all these different emails into just, just a plain email. Right. And it's, it, it takes more work. It takes more time. Um, now, now that you can utilize a CRM, now that we can utilize it, uh, it's, it's kind of twofold. So we can create specific email templates for every single club that we work with. Um, so we have within our system, a, a solid five to 10 different email templates that every single one of our salespeople is, is going to utilize between introductory emails, follow-up emails, what we call closing out your file emails. It's, it, it's a mix of a lot of different things. So what you can do when you're trying to send an email to a contact straight through the CRM, boom, you just click on that email template that goes right in there. That saves you a solid couple minutes every single yep. time. And, and that makes a big difference. Um, so that simplifies things and, and automates the process a little bit. Um, what we also have is basically our, our email marketing campaigns. Um, and what we can do is we can create these kind of separate email templates and put them into email marketing campaigns. And then we can go through our list of contacts and say, all right, these are the specific people based on this criteria that I want to send this email to. And we just pop them right into it um, and it automatically sends out. Or you can you can create a specific time that you actually want to send this information out as well. So um, it, it's more, it's kind of going back to that like automation and simplifying the process. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big deal, right? It, it's a big deal for all of us. It's a big deal for membership sales directors. They're busy got a lot going on, the more you can do that, but still have that personal touch. Um, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And yeah. Tyler, I think you can speak a little bit on this. You use this quite a bit and you're able to track certain metrics in the email. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I think one of the coolest features uh, for me in my current role, for uh, our membership sales directors, anybody on our, our team that uses HubSpot is there's, there's email tracking in it. Um, it's one of those insights that it almost feels dirty to have, uh, but you use it in a professional, respectful manner of, okay, you've had Mr. and Mrs. Smith come out and tour the club. They said they're interested in joining. You pushed them a little bit, but they still left without signing. And now it's time to again play that cat and mouse follow-up game. You send them the email and you know they're ghosting you. A couple of weeks go by. Well, I, on my phone, now have 15 notifications that Mr. and Mrs. Smith have opened that email that has the agreement and the application <laughs> on it. Who's going to get a call this afternoon? Uh, who's going to be you know the one I follow up with first thing tomorrow when I get back in the office? Again, using that type of intel and information in a professional, appropriate manner um, can be all the difference because, again, timing is everything. I'll go back real quickly to what Greg was just sharing as well on the email blast campaigns. I mean, thinking about, again, how we used to have to do it before we had a CRM system ourselves. You're sending an email to yourself with the blind carbon copy of as many people that you could. <laughs> it's not customized. It's not, it's not personalized. Um, there was no tracking capability. So you don't know who's opening that thing multiple times or how often they're looking at it. Um, so again, the steps that this has, the advantage, the technology that's built into these, um, you're going to be doing a price increase at your club. That's something that needs to be shouted from the mountaintops to everybody. Yeah. Again, having an email marketing campaign that you can let every single, it might be two, three, four hundred people. It's important to get that out early in advance so it can be leveraged properly, but you still want to do it in a personalized way. You still want it to have it addressed to, you know, first name or Mr. and Mrs. Smith, whoever it might be, um, and not be something that's just rushed because again, membership directors are very busy people. Yeah. It's a lot better than just saying like, hello. Come on. Good afternoon. Yeah. Here's how we're doing it. <laughs> yep. That's, that's a really good point. And I know the, uh, you know, gentlemen, the last piece that we were going to talk about today was some of the new AI integrations that we've just seen really recently with some of the CRM systems, right? AI in 2023 has been like the hot topic, right? Every time you open up your browser, you're reading a new article on AI, a new video on it on Instagram or Facebook or whatever else you're on. Can you talk a little bit about some of the AI things that have been built into the CRM lately? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I will preface this with saying I, I am very old school in a lot of ways. Um, so I'm, I'm still getting used to, to some of this, uh, some of this AI. Integration <laughs> don't age your, don't up. age yourself. Uh, yeah. Hey, take it easy. Uh, and I will give a big <laughs> shout out to, uh, to Ben Getman, who is one of our regional sales directors. Um, he's, he's really been doing his research and getting tapped into the AI integration specifically for sales and specifically for CRM systems. Um, and something it's, it's pretty new to be quite honest with the CRM system that we utilize, but, um, it's, it's really cool to see. And we've tapped into it over the last couple of weeks and, um, j just a couple quick things that you can utilize it for is uh, specifically what I've seen is with recording calls. So through CRM systems, every single one of our salespeople can record their calls through the system. They can go back, they can listen through they can kind of go through their own type of training and, and ongoing coaching themselves and say, I, you know, I wish I said this during this conversation instead of this. Um, so they can do that on their own. Now where the AI comes into it is you can then see, like it, it will tell you how many questions were asked by, by each person that was talking by each line. Um, it can tell you and, and kind of break out a transcript for the conversation, take the, the primary bullet points and lay that out for the salesperson right there. Um, some really, really cool stuff that is just the tip of the iceberg, I think, um, in terms of what these systems are going to be able to do. And also the tip of the iceberg for what, what <laughs> we are looking at and how we can utilize it. Um, but it's just that, yeah, I think more of that kind of moves into primarily the management of, of salespeople as well as just salespeople um, taking the reins on their process and utilizing that to just help themselves to get better. And uh, there's just specifically on those calls, there's just some really cool stuff that we can do. So uh, probably, probably more on that, maybe a, a few months from now, maybe that's another podcast, but yeah, uh, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. And like I tell people with AI early on, at least my, my thought process on it is it's not replacing anything or anyone, but what it is doing is speeding up that, that process, right? So if it normally took you 30 minutes to do something, it now takes you five. If it took you an hour, it may take you 20 minutes. And when you divide or, or sorry, when you add up all that time over a week or over a month or over a year, that significant portion of time that you can do more work or you know, more efficient things uh, that you weren't able to do before. So AI is really a tool to make yourself just more efficient as a person. And, and I think that's what we've seen going forward. Um, I say that and then one day AI will just replace me and then I will have been completely wrong. But for now, I think it's a, a great tool and a process that people can use effectively. Uh, so gentlemen, real quick, any closing words on CRM before I close this out here? Yeah, I'll say uh, we have recently come out with a new product line called uh, Capstone Drive. It is the exact system that we've talked at detail about today. Uh, it is a sophisticated CRM system, very, very uh, intentionally built for membership sales directors, their responsibilities, their duties, uh, what they're going to be doing day in and day out. That is something that I know we are now offering separately. Um, so that is something that we'd love to talk further about. If anybody out there is listening and has some interest in learning more about what a CRM system can do for you and your club and your sales process, and it comes along with training as well, not only on how to utilize that um, CRM system, but how to make sure all your foundational steps in your process are rock solid and you're optimizing your sales. So again, Capstone Drive, uh, something very new and exciting for us. Uh, reach out to me at Tyler at Capstone-Hospitality.com. And we'll, uh, we'll talk more about it soon. Yeah. And if you care more about reading about it, uh, before you reach out to Tyler, you can go to www.capstone-hospitality.com backslash drive dash info. A lot of dashes in what we do. So again, that was capstone-hospitality.com backsplat backslash drive dash info. If you have any questions, you can also reach that from our main page. If you look under services as well, so you can kind of see all of our services, which includes drive and all of our other services here at Capstone Hospitality. So gentlemen, thank you for joining me today and talking about CRM. I really appreciate your time and I hope you guys have a great Thursday. Thank you, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. It's been a pleasure.